guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. Today I thought I would do a little bit of a look back at everything I bought at Sephora in the year of 2021. Uh, considering I love makeup and also have a YouTube channel, uh, you can assume this video is gonna be long and it is gonna be pretty long. I thought this would be fun to not only look at my purchases personally, but I thought I could give some like mini reviews as I went through the stuff. I'll probably do kind of a, a yay, meh, nay system, you know, to try to keep it somewhat short. I like have so much stuff in front of me right now. But I also thought this would maybe shed a little bit of light on the purchases that I made as someone who does YouTube and does beauty stuff. And also I wanna mention something that I've kind of learned as I've, you know, grown my channel and I'm constantly kind of like trying to figure out as like a person, as a channel, combining it, all the stuff. Um, I do actually like spending my money on makeup to obviously an extent because if I don't, then I'm only using older products or new PR and I like balancing out any PR that I get with actually buying things that I'm interested in, whether it's new products, old products, whatever it is, I like having those things that I specifically chose to bring into my collection. And I'm lucky enough that I'm able to spend the money on the makeup now. So yeah, I thought this was also a bit of a throwback to my what was spent and what was sent series. I don't do that any longer, but I am gonna give you guys my total of products at the end that I ended up spending just at Sephora. Now this doesn't include other brands that I've purchased from their websites and stuff like that. So this is only a glimpse. And I would also say that this is probably pretty low in the scope of, you know, having a beauty channel, especially if you're heavily review based um, and if you don't get a ton of PR. It just costs a lot of money to keep up on launches and to make videos. And I'm really happy to say that as I was going through this, a lot of the stuff is like wins, which is awesome. So anyway, this video is gonna be long enough as it is. So I hope you get something out of this, whatever it is. And more than anything with all my videos with my channel in general, I hope that you can find the balance in your own personal life and your own finances to buy what you want, buy the things that actually spark joy and make you excited for makeup and hopefully avoid any purchases that you feel like you have to make because of other people or really don't in your heart want to make. So anyway, let's just get into it and we'll start from the beginning. All right, so the first order that I placed was in March, March 12th. I think I did a whole video like shopping on Sephora and also trying this stuff on. I think it was like a couple different parts. So you've definitely seen some of this stuff. The first thing I actually don't have, it's the LYS Beauty Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I got a shade entirely too dark for me. I actually ended up never even opening it. I don't even think I returned it though. And I think I just donated that. So <laughs> um, that I never got to try. I would still love to try that foundation, but um, I need to just go in store and find the best match that way. So that way, you know, I don't end up with the wrong color again. Next in this order, I had this Kaja little bento creamy lip and cheek duo is what it's called. I actually have that in my bad bin right now. Um, I think that for this year, I'm gonna like go through that bin. I've just kind of like tucked away products that I'm just kind of like, I don't know about you, you know? And so I want to go through that this year and kind of talk about disappointing products, but maybe they'll make it back in my collection. I'm kind of in a weird stage right now. I'm not like feeling the decluttering that much. I have like space in my drawers. I've been enjoying shopping my stash, giving things extra tries. I don't know. I'm just in that headspace right now. And you know, I can always declutter later if I end up not liking it. Anyway, that's not this video. That's a different video, <laughs> but I don't have that technically in like what I would consider my collection right now. Um, but we'll see. I didn't really enjoy it. I was so excited for this product too, because I, I really loved Kaja, but throughout the year, Kaja, has had a transformation, a metamorphosis <laughs> into a brand that I'm actually not that interested in anymore, which is so different than, you know, years past. I just had this like soft spot for Kaja, but I'm learning, um, you know, maybe it's not for me. All right, next is a product I actually have to show you. This is the Tower 28 Jelly Lip Gloss in Cashew. I really love the color of this. So many people love this lip gloss, and unfortunately, I'm just not one of them. Um, it feels nice. Like everything about this is pretty good. The thing that I, I just can't get past is the smell. Some of you have said that you smell something good, but a lot of you guys have agreed that this just doesn't have a pleasant smell. And then unfortunately for me, it's like past unpleasant and goes into blood territory. And like, oh, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and honestly, like if the the smell of something smells like blood to you, I think it's just probably a no-go, you know? <laughs> like that's pretty far, you know? So um yeah, I don't use this much. Color's beautiful. I'm kind of nervous to try another one in case they all smell that way to me. So yeah. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> I want to like that so bad. I want to like it so bad and be a cool girl and like, you know, but I don't. <laughs> it's just something that's really tough for me to get over. I still put it in my lip gloss drawer. I'm still hopeful over here, but um, yeah, I probably should let that go. The next product from this order, this is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Hydro Maniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. I really like this product. Um, I like this tinted moisturizer slash foundation type product. It has a medium coverage. I don't find that it gives me a ton of glow. It's been a little bit since I've used it, um, but I do find that it gives me just enough coverage, not too much. I definitely can see my skin under it, which I personally enjoy. It's super lightweight and thin and like feels lightweight on the face. And I love that about it too. So I would put this in like a positive. I wouldn't say this is like my favorite foundation, but it's definitely in my collection, which I, you know, to be transparent, have about mm, six foundations. So I would say this is in my top three, so that's good. But yeah, I definitely need to bust it out again. I've just been going back to my Yensa one. I love that. And I've also been trying to use up this other one from Pure Lease. So those have been the ones that I've just been like using over and over, but um, I do like this. I'm really happy with this purchase. And um, it's one that I would like recommend if someone was looking into this type of a foundation, I would be like, check this one out. See if it's the one for you or not, you know? Okay, we have some more cream blushes. It really was the year of cream blushes. And especially for me at the beginning of the year. So I have this cheek slime from Freck. I do like this. I think it's a nice formula. This is the thing that's really tough. The color is the thing that I don't love. Like I think the formula is nice. I think it goes on nice, all those things. What stops me from reaching for it more and more is the color and I'm definitely learning that. Like formula can be great and all that, but what keeps me reaching for blushes are the colors. <laughs> I need colors that I actually like to wear and I'm learning I love like browns, neutrals, nothing too pink. I'd rather go warm usually than cool toned. And so what that ends up being, and um, I have to like stop myself from having a variety of blushes. Like I already have a variety, but if I'm bringing new blushes in, I know it's the boring choice, I get it, <laughs> but that's the freaking one I'm gonna use. So I need to stop myself from trying to like have diversity in color when it's like, yeah, but if you get that other color, you're not gonna use it. Just get the one you're gonna use and like be okay with being boring. <laughs> Just get over that and buy the blush you'll use. Anyway, another Tower 28 product that I purchased. This is the Magic Hour blush. Everyone loves this and the color on this one, it is better. It has more brown in it than the Freck one, um, I find. So it is a really pretty color. It is a tackier formula, so it's just kind of heavy. It's one of those ones that really benefits from kind of warming it up with your finger. I think it adds a nice glow if you're someone who has dry skin or you like that really glowy look. I totally get why this has hype around it. It is really nice. I just, I think right now I'm in the powder mode. I like powder blushes right now. This is the thing that I am just like, <laughs> I'm in a nostalgia mode. I'm like not wanting to declutter stuff. I'm like, who am I? And this is what happens. Your tastes change, your preferences change, what you're into could be for the moment. It could be the new thing that you do and so that's part of why I'm like I don't want to declutter <laughs> I'm just like just hold on to it for a little it's not a big deal anyway I've definitely slowed down on buying cream blushes this year maybe once the weather changes it starts getting sunnier out and all that I'll be back into it because you know we're talking about a time period when I bought this stuff was March so maybe in March you know again it'll like come back around like clockwork but at the moment I'm down with a powder uh, blush but more a glowy foundation like having the foundation itself have some nice moisture to it so yeah that's where I'm at nice product Products, though. I still give this a yay. I still give this a yay. I still give this a yay. You know, I don't know. Those are just my current thoughts on them if you want to know. <laughs> We're really going to be here a while. <laughs> I'm realizing it's gonna be a long video. Tuck on in, baby. Continuing on, I bought some Say products. So this is the Say Glowy Super Gel in the shade Star Glow. Now, I used this recently in a shop my stash. I was like going back to older products and whatnot, and I thought it was nice. I think I had really high expectations for Say, and so I think that's clouded a bit of like what I expected from the brand, although I have been extremely disappointed in some of the products I've tried also. So it goes both ways, but I bought the mini of this, and 
and I'm very glad to have this small size and I will keep it around in my collection. I've been using this as like a primer type product, so like before I go on with foundation, but a lot of you in that video say that you use this as like a real highlighter and I definitely wanna explore doing that. So this is an okay purchase, I'm, I'm meh about it. The other say product that I had is this like marshmallow, let me read it off. It says, Dew Balm Bouncy Marshmallow Highlighter in Rosy Gold, hated this thing. Texturally, it was very odd. I mean, they don't even have that many products, so I think that's why I also thought this was more of like a face primer slash, you know, like you could use it for anything, kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury filter, you know, thing where you can use it under makeup, you can use it as the highlighter. That's what I thought this was because this is also a highlighter. Like, why do you have so many highlighters in your collection when you only have 10 products? At least at the time, you know, when I made this order. Anyway, didn't like this. <laughs> Not good, in my bad box. <laughs> yeah, that one's probably gonna go. Next, this is a product from Glow Recipe. This is the Watermelon Glow Pink Dream Body Cream, and I really love this. I have about half of it left. Honestly, Sam uses this the most when he gets out of the shower, he's so dry, so <laughs> I'll put this on him so he's not just like actually uncomfortable. I believe this has like acids in it to help like surface and like make your skin nice and soft, and it smells really good, like the watermelon stuff from them. So yeah, I just, I get on with most of the Glow Recipe products. And so when that came out this year, I definitely wanted to give it a go and I'm happy with it. I would repurchase it also. Okay, anyway, last two products for this order. I have a Bobbi Brown Crush Shine Jelly Stick. I'll have a picture here. I love this product, really happy with this purchase actually. I just can't find it. I thought it was maybe in my purse, but now I'm like, maybe it's fallen out of my purse into my car somewhere. I don't know where it is, but <laughs> when I find it, it'll go back in my drawer. I really do like that product. The formula on it is really nice because it is a little bit more moisturizing. It's a little Little bit like it's like semi sheer I would say I love the color that I picked out I got the shade honey which is like a brownie neutral shade so yeah like everything about it was a really nice choice it says it's not available like anymore it's out of stock so I don't know if it's out of stock forever or just at the moment but very happy with that purchase even though it's very expensive it's like a $30 lip product and then last I picked up a concealer now I've had to since rebuy that concealer because I picked up the wrong shade and so I ended up just passing that on I think to my mom um, and then I I purchased actually the shade 01 later on. Really love this concealer from Kosas. I find it has pretty good coverage. It's really creamy. It doesn't like set down or dry down really, but I don't get a ton of creasing um, and it's just a solid concealer. I would say I think the colors run darker than you expect, so keep that in mind. I'm still making um, one work for me, but I probably could go down to the lightest shade, especially right now, but I do really like it. A lot of you have told me that these go bad fast, so I'm definitely gonna be watching out for this product and making sure that it's still smelling good and all that, but a really great purchase, definitely a staple in my collection this year. On to the next order. I'm not talking about samples, point perks, anything like that, because we would be here like literally forever. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but I'm also not mentioning any gifts that I bought people. So yeah, anyway, next order was just one thing. And I'm actually really glad I'm doing this video because I went to pull this out. I bought this in May, like the end of May. And this is like bad. Like, can you hear that? I'm not happy about it. I try not to return things, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna return this because this was way too freaking expensive for this to go bad on me. That doesn't seem right, especially to the expiration date on the back says 123. So I don't know what's going on with this. I don't know why it's doing this. Anyway, what it is, this is the stiletto cream from Lord Jones, which is like a CBD brand. So I really love their CBD lotions. I actually bought from them on Black Friday. If you guys caught my Black Friday haul. So yeah, I've been dealing with plantar fasciitis. I, Anyway, you guys don't need to know all of my details, but I thought this would be a really nice thing for me and CBD has worked on other parts of my body and I don't know, I just thought I'll get the exact formulated foot cream one. I think it had like a higher concentration, had like 200 milligrams, but unfortunately it's already um, kind of separated and weird in there. So I'm very upset about that because I just feel like something's actually defective and wrong with what's going on with that. But I do highly suggest just the body cream. I think that would work for my purposes anyway, so yeah. Okay. Okay, next I have some really fun stuff. This was a bit of a big order. I purchased first this Way St. Bart's Scalp and Body Scrub. I was so excited to try this out because I really wanted to try this scent. This is like a limited edition scent that came out this year mm, and it smells so good. It's tropical, it's kind of coconutty, but there's something still kind of refined. It's not like overly sweet and syrupy. It's just a really nice product. This is one of my favorite body scrubs. It's luxurious. It's 
Oh, it feels so good in the shower. The scrubbing particles in here are a little bit big and I find that it kind of like turns into a bit of a, a wash, you know, like it turns almost white as you're using it and it just feels great. It's not a super gritty wash, like it's not like a pure sugar scrub or something. And usually that's what I'm into, but this works. It works, it scrubs, it does its job, but it leaves me feeling really moisturized afterward without that greasy feeling. So I'm really into this. I have about half left. I've definitely taken <laughs> my time on using it because I do just enjoy using it so much, but highly recommend if you're looking to treat yourself, if you wanted to give it as a gift, I think it's a really nice one. Um, or if you just, you know, wanna buy it for yourself, and you're gonna use it in the shower every day. Like have a little luxury in your normal life. I get it too. I realized that this wasn't included in my list. So I don't know if buying in person things weren't in here. I don't know what that's about, but this is the Way Scalp and Body Scrub in just the regular one. And I initially bought this not realizing it wasn't the right scent. So I also bought this, but I bought this in store. So I have a feeling that's gonna be slightly skewed. I didn't shop a ton in store this year. Ooh, this one smells good too. It smells more like a, a spa or like a high-end hair salon. But anyway, that might throw things off just slightly. I'm sorry about that. Okay, next I have another product from Say. I decided to give them another try. This is the cream bronzer in light bronze. This is like the sun melt cream bronzer. So badly I want this to work, but the color's just off. You can kind of tell here it's a little bit red. So I've given this a couple different tries. I might let it stay around until next summer again and see if something's changed. Maybe I'll like a more red tone bronzer at that time. But I've had a lot of great suggestions to try like the ABH one or even the Huda Contour one. So I'll probably give those a try um, if this doesn't actually work out. Next, I have a blush from Pat McGrath. This is the flirtatious color. The packaging on this is a little bit tricky, but this is the shade. I like this. I think this is a nice blush, great formula. I think there are some really pretty colors. I'd love to see these in person and see if there's another one that would maybe be better for me, but I, I do like this. So really happy with how that is. That's like as pink as I like to go though, at least at the moment. I don't wanna go pinker than that on the everyday, obviously for certain looks or whatever I'm doing maybe, but um, I definitely like a pretty neutral blush. I like to keep basically everything on the face pretty neutral and then I can kind of play up my lips or play up my eyes depending on what I wanna do. That's kind of been my thing. Next, unfortunately, I had a casualty. Um, this is the Makeup by Mario highlighter and I initially got the shade Opal um, and it was a very icy color. It actually is a beautiful formula in the opal shade specifically. I really like that formula. It was nice and shiny, but I don't love an icy highlighter. So I was like, oh, it's so tough because I like the way it looks, <laughs> but I don't like the color. And so I was like, I want to get the next shade down. And anyway, uh, the casualty happened. It was on my counter. I was using it and it fell off and the whole pan fell out. That happened more recently. I'm very sad about it. But yeah, if you like an icier highlight, I think it's a beautiful one. But if you don't, don't get that color because it's definitely more of like a white color. I'll mention this here because again, I must have bought this in person, but this is the other shade of the highlighter from the Makeup by Mario stuff. And unfortunately, this to me is not the same formula as the other highlighter. So although I like this color better, uh, the color Pearl, definitely more my style. You can tell it's a little bit more beige. This doesn't shine the same way the other one does. And so now I like the color and I don't like the formula. <laughs> like what the heck? So that's kind of unfortunate. So I wouldn't suggest this one um, like I would even the other one. So yeah, <laughs> that was a bust and unexpected. I was expecting it to be the same formula, but I just found I wasn't enjoying it the same way on the face as I should have just thinking about the color being different. Anyway, next in this order, this is the Glowish by Huda Beauty Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. This is okay. The bronzers have been tough for me, so I give this a meh. I give the Say bronzer probably a meh. I feel like if the color works for you, you'd probably really like them, but since the colors don't quite work for me, it's hard for me to just like, you know, rave about them, I guess. But formula-wise, there's really nothing wrong with them. So yeah, that just kind of comes with the territory of trying new products. Next, we have our first eyeshadow palette. I I did pick up the Patrick Ta Major Dimension palette this year. I wanted to give this a try after trying the blushes and I've been into neutral shades this year. So I was like, let's go. <laughs> I was really excited by the textural shades in here. And although I think they are pretty, they are. They're really stunning shadows. I can get a really beautiful look. 
I will say this isn't my favorite neutral palette on the market and I just find there are other like textural shades out there. I don't feel like I get the, as much use out of the creams and you know half the palette is mattes which I do like a matte now again more than I have in the past but I wish the ratio to mattes and shimmers were like you know skewed toward the shimmers a little bit more and yeah there's like two that are like shimmers they're mostly matte too like I don't know. It's not a bad purchase. I keep it in my collection. I don't like feel the need to declutter it. Again, I'm, I'm kind of harsh. Like when I rave about something, it's cause I freaking love it. <laughs> and I just don't think I can like rave about it that much, at least not right now. And yeah, that's, that's my thoughts, okay? <laughs> but I think something I can get from that purchase is definitely like as I get back into neutrals, um, realizing and really taking stock of the finishes that are in a palette is gonna help me make better decisions on what neutral palettes are gonna work for me as opposed to other ones that won't. So I definitely took that away from that palette. And last for this order, this is the Dazzle Stick from KVD. Love this thing. You guys have heard me rave about it, talk about it. Like it's so good. This is Electro Bolt. This is the first one I tried because like everything else was sold out. And um, since then I've now had almost every shade. I just don't have like the bronze one cause it's not that good. <laughs> it's not like as special as the others, but I love this. This was like a standout for the year. Very happy I purchased this. I've definitely been into more actually cream shadows, like maybe not liquid shadows as much, but like cream stick type things, very into. Even cream pots, like single pot shadows really in any formula I've also really liked. Next, I made a purchase, I think cause I had a gift card or something. And I think specifically it was a gift card that I've had for years, but I could only use it at JCPenney Sephora. So technically I think like, I don't know how it works, but I think that if you buy a Sephora gift card at JCPenney, it's technically a JCPenney gift card. So it doesn't work both ways. Like you can't use it at Sephora. You have to use it only at the Sephora in JCPenney pennies if you're gonna do it. So I technically ordered this stuff, I think on JC Penney's website, but somehow it shows up on my Sephora actual page. Like I know that's weird to say, but I'm pretty sure that's how that whole confusing thing went down. Anyway, I got two of these mini palettes from Natasha Denona. This is the mini retro. Beautiful, beautiful little palette. So happy with these. I really love the mini palettes um, from Natasha Denona. I wish so badly you could pop the shades out, but you can't. Um, so I definitely only buy the minis that I feel like the color story really speaks to me. And so I also got the mini Zendo palette. And again, I think these are both this perfect mix of like neutrals as well as like something kind of colorful. And that's like the neutral palette that I am like most into. So these were definitely big wins, very happy with them. And then with that order, I decided to pick up an Otherland candle. This is the scent Extra Hour, um, and the notes on here are Shiso Leaf, Verbena, and Mint. It definitely is more of like a refreshing green scent. I haven't even burned this yet, so <laughs> did I need this? Definitely not. It's definitely a unique candle in my collection, which I don't know when the studio is going up, but I did do a whole candle collection video. So I'll either leave it linked or it's coming, so <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I am excited to burn this more towards spring. That's when I'm gonna need to burn that one, because it's very green and like it doesn't work for right now for sure. <laughs> the next order I bought this Way and by Rado collaboration. This is the leave-in conditioner from Way. I already knew I liked that from a little sample and then it was with by Rado and for some reason I don't know this kind of started the scent thing for me. Um, I was like what is by Ray? I didn't even know what by Rado was at this point of <laughs> in the year, which is so funny to me now considering. But this is the Mojave Ghost scented leave-in conditioner. I freaking love this thing. Um, I love this conditioner. It works so well for my thin hair. It doesn't leave it greasy, but I can like brush my hair out and it smells so good specifically in this scent. I like this so much. I bought my friends some of these and they like love it. <laughs> like my friend Amy's like obsessed with this and my friend Serena. So it was a fun thing to gift. I have about half left and I will probably repurchase this. It's kind of taken over my Moroccan oil honestly. The other thing I bought in this purchase is the Atelier Cologne Pacific Lime. I think I had samples of this. I had sampled it at Sephora like a year or two before that. Like I knew I loved this. I was just waiting for it to be kind of spring and summer and I finally just bit the bullet and bought the travel size of this and it's a beautiful perfume. This is that kind of limey coconut, more refreshing, citrusy type of smell. It's not overly sweet. It's nice and light. Just overall very refreshing. So um, if those sound good, 
good to you. That's kind of Atelier's brand. They don't do anything that, that heavy. I love the scent and I'm really glad to have this. Next, I bought a gift, but then I also bought myself this. This is the Moroccan oil. I love the smell of Moroccan oil. And so when they came out with their fragrance mist, which was like supposed to be for your hair and your body, you could do whatever. I was so excited, but honestly, I mean, it does smell like it, but there's just nothing like using like the hair products and then getting a whiff of like Sam's hair. Like there's just nothing that can top that. I can tell this isn't that. Like even though it's that scent, it's not the same. I wish that I had bought, I didn't realize they had a smaller one and I, if I could go back in time, I would definitely get the small one of this or honestly not even purchase it. It just doesn't quite smell the same. I don't know what it is. It has to be in the hair. It has to be with your shampoo or dry shampoo and that's it, okay? You can't, you can't fake it with this. I can't fake it. I can tell the difference. It doesn't give me the same satisfaction. That one was kind of a bust, unfortunately, even though I already knew I liked the scent. I think that's like the weirdest thing about that one, but it doesn't satisfy the same. Next, I have another one of the mini palettes from Natasha Denona. I loved the other two so much. I decided to get the mini star and I love this one too. This is another great one if you want something kind of neutrally, but then it has this like duochrome blue to spice it up if you want to. Like, I think this is just a really well curated little pan, especially for my preferences. So really love that one. And with that, I bought this Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. This is in the shade Vanilla Beige and I really like this product. I think it's a really nice like balmy lip gloss type of product. I feel like it's hydrating, um, but not overly like, you know, it's just nice, especially on days when you maybe aren't wearing a ton of makeup or any makeup at all. This will still look good, but kind of finish your lips a little bit more. I like wearing this with a, a lip liner. It's definitely a color I enjoy, but still really sheer. So this was a great purchase. I'm happy. It's a very expensive purchase, but um, I do like that lip product. Moving on next, I purchased the Natasha Denona Love Palette. I was really excited to get this because of the price. That is really what sent me over the edge to actually purchase this. It was half off at like $32. So very happy with the price of this. I've like waited to open it because I have all these moved around, but that's why I bought them. I don't need to get into it in every video I feel like, but I love that you can remove the pans from these. So I think of the Natasha Denona bigger palettes as not only their own color story if you like it, but also that you can add to a collection, have them as singles and easily put them back. I think that's really the difference because obviously you could depot any eyeshadow palette if you wanted to, but I love that you don't have to like destroy this and you can kind of get the best of both worlds. So you guys already know that. If you're here <laughs> watching the videos, you know that you're probably like, yeah, we get it, Lauren, but just in case, just in case you don't know. <laughs> okay, next we have the first perfume sampler that I bought at Sephora. I think I have a video smelling this, so I'll leave it linked down below, but I love these perfume samplers from Sephora. You get to buy them at a rate that is discounted than usually any of the perfumes would be if you bought them full price and you get to try them out. Some of them are a really great deal also. And so for the first one, I decided to redeem the certificate in there for Marc Jacobs' Daisy Oh So Intense, a beautiful perfume. I love Daisy the original and the intense version is just that. It's just a little bit deeper. It has like some strawberry in it. There's something about it that's just a little bit sweeter, a little bit more, I guess, rich than the original Daisy, maybe not quite as light and airy, but still very similar. Um, and I, I love it. This is such a nostalgic scent to me. So I love having that in my perfume collection. I then went and bought the clean sampler that they had. Um, and for that one, I redeemed the certificate for the Clean Reserve Radiant Nectar scent. This is a beautiful pear scent. It also has Ambroxan in it. I'm gonna spray it. Maybe one of the closest things I could think of it's kind of like pear ink, which I'll show you in a second. It kind of reminds me of maybe God is a woman. Like the pear on it is pretty strong. Like that's the main fruit that you get and it's sweet yet still light. And like, I don't know, non-offensive, not overly sweet. It's a nice scent. And I'm also glad to have this in my collection. I think there are a lot of great ones from the Clean Reserve line, but they're quite pricey. They're almost like a hundred dollars, but in the set, if you buy it, it's $68. So you're definitely saving money there. And that's why I love them. I'm super into them. <laughs> If I can save the money on the perfumes, I'm definitely trying to lately. Okay, next I bought one of these samplers that is just to redeem for a travel size. And this one, if I could go back, I probably wouldn't purchase this one because this is all about Self Care Sunday is the perfume sampler set name. And a lot of these scents were more clean and uh, I don't know, like just not really my style. And so I felt like it was a little difficult, honestly, to pick a perfume. But the one I ultimately went with and redeemed my certificate for was the Replica Bubble bath. I picked this because it does have ultimately this like warmth to it um, like as it's on the body and it does have a coconut note but it's definitely very soapy to me very clean a little sharp like it's 
clean in a very sharp way. Reminds me of like bar soap, you know? It makes sense, bubble bath. <laughs> like the name is very on point and very uh, accurate, but maybe if I could go back, I wouldn't um, pick up that sampler just because I felt kind of trapped into a very specific scent type and I wasn't really feeling any of them. Next, I picked up a gift set and this was the Laneige gift set that had the full size of the Laneige lip balm sleeping mask and then also two minis. I just have the two minis left. Really, the entire reason I bought it was because my mom said she ran out and so I bought that to gift her the full size of the lip product and then I was like, and I'll get the minis, like a little treat for myself also. So this is the Ginger Snap one. I've been enjoying this actually. It smells really nice. Mm, it's a good one and I like this lip balm a lot. And then I also got peppermint, which I haven't busted into yet. I love the little lip sets. I think if you go through them or you wanna gift them, I think they can be nice from Laneige, especially around the holidays. Okay, I can't lie. I did take a small break to grab a bite to eat, but let's continue on. Next thing, I purchased another LYS beauty product. I wanted to buy more from the initial launch, but everything sold out so fast. So when they added highlighters to the collection, I was really excited. This is the Aim High Highlighter in Brave. I believe this is the lightest shade, and unfortunately it's just a little too dark for me. I like the formula and I think that if this were the right color, it would be something I'd really enjoy. But because of the color, it's just a little bit too golden for me, like a little too deep of a gold, um, even when I'm kind of tan. So this is probably one I'll pass on to someone and hopefully they can get some great use out of it. But I did still like that product. Next, we have like an emergency purchase. <laughs> no, not really, but kind of. I mean, I had to move fast on this baby. This is the Natasha Denona Gold Pack. Palette. I finally ended up picking this up this year because it's being discontinued and so I knew there wasn't a ton of time It was sold out then it came back and when I found out it came back I made sure to just grab it right now I have the shadows pulled out because I am planning a video with these um, So I'm really excited for that and I can't wait to just play I have like this patchwork quilt of all my Natasha Denona singles and I'm so excited to play and I'm really happy to have this in my collection Obviously would have preferred to get that like on sale, but but um, it was never probably gonna happen. So glad I picked that up. All right, next I have some drawers that I actually purchased from uh, Sephora. These are like some acrylic drawers. I have them in my bathroom. Maybe I'll take like a quick video and put them in here, but they're quite large. I actually really like them. Um, I initially only wanted three, but somehow it worked out that there's four. <laughs> there's four of them, but they were on an amazing deal. Like, 30% off plus a coupon like I don't know somehow they ended up being like under $15 a piece I believe um, Which for acrylic drawers is pretty good and again for the size that they are I was really happy You can like mix and match them and I really like having them in my bathroom Especially in this new place It works out pretty well to have all my my makeup stored in them in a way that's easy to reach when I'm not filming and stuff So I'm really happy with that purchase didn't have to get it from Sephora But actually ended up saving I think some money by purchasing from Sephora all right, next is another palette. This is one that I'm so glad I purchased this year. I know I've been raving about it a lot, so forgive me, but I do really like it. The Rose Quartz Palette from Huda Beauty. I picked this up on a bit of a whim. I feel like the photos don't do it justice, and even looking at it, I... <laughs> I don't even know if it does it justice. I mean, I can see the beautiful shine and the shimmer shades that are in here um, in person, but some of the other mattes kind of just seem a little lackluster, but it's just beautiful. They're like velvety. I'm just into it. I'm into this palette. Um, this is a neutral palette. I'm very happy to purchase one of the top ones for the year for me, for sure. Very happy with it. Next is my VIB like uh, November sale purchases. So I purchased a couple different things to take advantage of that 20% off. So I got two of these replica perfumes this is by the fireplace which I love I already have a bit of a dent in it so good mm, so good I definitely can see myself using this up and then I'll get the big one after that once once that happens I will and then this is autumn vibes this one came out this year it's a really nice like dry kind of woody walk in the forest type of scent um, and if you don't know the by the fireplace is like this smoky marshmallow scent oh they're so good I love too that they started carrying these like 30 mil bottles because they're way cheaper than the big one and when I think of like my perfume collection I like having a lot of different perfumes I like the kind of apothecary vibe of all these bottles and like I just love it so I don't mind having smaller amounts especially if it's not something I'm gonna like run through you know all the time okay then I bought two sampler sets I know more of the perfume samplers but they already are such a good deal and then getting them 20% off I was super excited so I redeemed one of them for Juliet has a gun this is pear ink and this is an 
especially good deal because this is like $135 perfume full price and I think I ended up getting it for like 50 or so. And then I also redeemed for Marc Jacobs Perfect. This is like a rhubarb scent. It's sweet and kind of watery to me. It smells very much like a shampoo-y type of fragrance. It's nice, I enjoy it, but the cap is a bit much for me. <laughs> um, and then the last two things for that order, I got another one of the minis. I ended up picking this up, which if I had just waited, I could have got it half off, but you know, could have, would have, should have. I really like the mini love palette. I think it's a beautiful little pink color story. Again, love those minis. And then this was more of an impulse purchase, wasn't expecting to make it. This is from Fleur and this is the Sandra perfume from them. It was already on clearance and then 20% off. I was like, I'm gonna get it. It's nice. It's like a spicy kind of woody type scent. It's not too heavy. It's kind of unisex. So, um, you know, not my favorite. I had no idea what this was gonna smell like. I just was kind of like, put it in the bag. That was my like, put it in the bag moment. All right, we have the last couple of orders. I purchased some stuff, I think with the other 20% off that came out. So right after the VIB sale, they then were like dropped a coupon that was one time use only for everyone to get 20% off. And so I bought a few things with that. One is an oldie, like something that's been on my list for a long time. This is the Makeup by Mario Master Metallics eyeshadow palette. Unfortunately, my little pan here keeps falling out. So I haven't decided that the thing is, I know if I return this, they're just gonna throw it away. So I'm like, should I just glue it in? But if there's something about that that I kind of hate, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Anyway, dilemmas, I don't know what to do, but this is it. It's a lot um, more colorful in person than I expected, but I do wanna try this on the eye. So I'll probably just glue that back in. It's not a big deal. Okay, anyway, so I did get that. It's all shimmer. It's like beautiful. So I really, really hope that I like the formula on my eyeballs. I picked up this thing from um, Ink. Ink Credible, I think is the brand. This is the eye pigment in Daily Drams. And unfortunately, this is supposed to be, <laughs> I think this is supposed to be like a semi-liquid, semi-cream thing. It is so dried out. I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. So um, this is another like faulty product. And I read that in a lot of the reviews. It's so unfortunate because it is a really pretty uh, color. And I'm just like, I don't know if I wanna sit here and like, bring it back and all that stuff, you know? I don't know what I wanna do. So that was just like, <laughs> it was like a lot of disappointments, honestly. I was like, the eyeshadow thing came out. This came totally just like dried and shriveled up in the thing and I tried to like press it in and I don't know. Uh, you know, anyway, I got this candle from Summer Fridays. This is the soft vanilla scent, which I really love in the oil, like the perfume oil. Oh, so I think it's the only candle that they have. It was already on sale plus the discount. It smells so good. I love this vanilla scent. It's kind of like this creamy vanilla custard mixed with a woody note, like some sandalwood. And I just find it super warm and cozy. Mm, I really love this one. I just realized I have this hanging out and I know I purchased this and re-upped it, but I think I missed it in a past one. So I did re-up on my In Beauty uh, lip glaze, really like that. Okay, and then the last two products that I purchased are both um, travel size or like smaller sizes of two new perfumes at Sephora. So I got a travel size of When the Rain Stops from Replica. And this is a very unisex, if not like leaning kind of masculine scent to me. It's clean. Um, it definitely has like an aquatic smell to it. Kind of spicy. I don't know, it's pretty manly to me. It like falls into kind of a, a deodorant or body wash for a guy to me in that kind of realm. The other one I was super excited to get my hands on is from Kaoli. This is the Eden Juicy Apple. And I love that they do their small sizes in little bottles. It's so cute. <laughs> I haven't tried a ton from Kaoli. I really wanna try the vanilla one, but it's always sold out. So I never get the chance to. And this is very apple, like juicy apple is definitely it. It's very fruity and sweet. It's definitely youthful to me. It reminds me of something from Bath and Body Works that I've smelled before with a little bit more depth, maybe a little bit more nuance, um, but it's kind of similar. Like I'm not gonna lie, there's something about it that's very Bath and Body Works. I don't know, it's like home apple or what is their old apple scent? Country apple. Okay, it's kind of like country apple meets forever red, to me at least from Bath and Body Works. That's kind of the vibe. Like it's a little bit more complicated and nuanced than just country apple, but it definitely has that like really 
you know, juicy apple scent mixed with something more perfumey. Um, so if you like that, it's nice. Like I think it's a nice perfume and I think it's probably different than a lot of the stuff in the line from at least what I've just sniffed on and off. But again, I'm not like super, super knowledgeable of the line, but I, I do think it's quite different. I like it. I'm glad I just have it in a small size. I don't need the big size. Um, and I, I could see people thinking this maybe smells a little cheap or more what I would say is that if you really like this, I think you probably could find this scent at a better price point than what the full size would be of this. Anyway, so that's the Kaoli one and that's everything that I bought at Sephora this year. I feel like there's a lot of stuff, a lot of different categories though. It wasn't just all makeup, not that many palettes. Let's see. Um, I have my Patrick Ta, Natasha Denona. I don't think that the Sunrise palette was on here, but I did pick that up as well. I don't know, it feels kind of confusing over on the orders. Sometimes the Sephora stuff isn't always the most accurate. So again, forgive me if it's a little bit off, but yeah, this is like for big palettes from Sephora. I ended up picking up four, five, six, six big palettes from Sephora. And then a bunch of those mini palettes from Natasha Denona. Lots of perfume, makeup, some body care stuff, a couple candles even. I would say most of it I really truly love. So that makes me really happy that most of it wasn't a bust. And for the grand total, if you've been waiting, when I calculated everything up in my orders, not counting gifts, I believe I spent $1,550.52, but I think give or take a bit, depending on if I bought stuff in store. So yeah, $1,500 dollars for my total for the year. You know, I used to talk a lot and like dissect my numbers a lot and I don't do it as much, like especially on the channel in the same way because I do feel like my relationship to the money I spend on my makeup is just different. Like there's just this inherent difference buying personally and then buying in this mixed world of like personal and business. So I look at it a little bit differently now, but that's also not to say that if you spend this much and you want to spend this much on beauty and you don't do YouTube, I don't also think that's necessarily a bad thing. Thing. Like again, it's all about to me spending your money how you want to actually deep down in your heart. You know what I mean? Like that's more, um, I feel like as I've gone on my journey with beauty and been where it's taken me, kind of what I've come to the conclusion of, of like everyone's finances are different. Everyone's personal situation is different. What they, their obligations are as well as their interests and what they want to do with um, makeup. If they want like a small makeup collection, if they like having everything, if they like the nostalgia, all of it. So anyway, I thought I would still just like give you guys the insight on what I spent specifically at Sephora. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed all the little reviews also as we went. Although I bought other things than just Sephora stuff, I, I'm realizing having this all in front of me and going through it, this is like a very big portion of like what I think of my makeup year, like 2021, is the stuff that I picked up from Sephora. Are the palettes that I bought, the makeup, the perfume, all of it. It's like what I use a lot, what I talk about a lot. And that makes makes me super happy. You know, I feel like that's an indicator that a lot of it were good purchases for me in, in one way or another. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to know maybe what are your key items that you bought at Sephora this year. Obviously, if you have any recommendations of things you think I might like, let me know. And other than that, I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.